Hi there, I'm Alana Lee from the Imaginator Studio, and in this tutorial, I'll walk you through step-by-step -step how to apply, blend, and customize overlays in Photoshop. We'll start with this image here from Adobe Stock. It's an image of a young violin player, and I'll use the overlays from the Imaginator Studio's Ultimate Creative Overlay Collection to add some creative effects that will help make the image more unique. We'll transform the image from this to this using creative overlays. Let's get started. We'll start by adding some fire to the bow of the violin. In order to do this, we'll go to File, Place Embedded, and navigate to the folder on your computer where you store your overlays. Here I'm looking inside the collection from the Imaginator Studio, and I'm going to select the fire overlays from this collection and I'm going to look within the collection for a piece of fire that will will fit my image. I think I'll just start with fire overlays number one. We'll select that and hit place and that will bring your overlay into Photoshop as a smart object. By doing it in this way, uh, using a smart object, it will preserve the integrity of the pixels of our overlays so that if we adjust the size or make any adjustments to the overlay itself, it'll preserve the integrity and quality of that overlay. From here, we can grab the handles on any of the corners of our overlay. We can rotate it and we can also change the size of that. In order to make the black background of our overlay disappear, we want to go to our properties in the layers panel. And from the drop down, we have a variety of different blend modes. If you choose the screen blend mode, it will make the black disappear from whatever overlay you're using. So let's toggle screen and you can see that that makes all of the black disappear and we can see what's happening with our overlay. We'll make a final adjustment here to our placement to get it fitting just where we want it here in our image. And I think I would also like to adjust um, the overlay a little bit to wrap around our model's face. In order to do that, with our transform tools here, we can toggle this button, which is our warp feature, and that will place a grid over our overlay. And then we can click anywhere in the grid and kind of warp and move our, our overlay to adjust our image. And we'll just have it wrap right around her face like this. So it's not covering her face. And we want to make sure we have the base of our fire just running along our bow, just like so. And when you get it to where you think you would like it, we'll just move this slightly down to be have these fire flames on the bow. Simply hit enter on your keyboard or click done. And that will lock things in place. And there you can see our overlay placed just where we want it. Okay, next we'll add a realistic warm glow from the fire to the violin player's skin and instrument. This is one of my favorite tricks to blend color overlays naturally. So first is what we're going to do is we're going to paint a soft orange color over the areas where we want the warm light to hit. So I will use the eyedropper tool to select some orange from our fire. Here looks good and you can see in our color selection that orange is on the top layer. Next we'll choose our brush and we'll ensure our brush is set to the softest possible setting. We're going to simply brush on our image where we feel that the fire light would naturally be reflected on our subject. 
probably along her hair here and on her face, along the bridge of her nose, on her cheek, the corners of her chin, basically the areas that are going to catch that fire glow along the violin, maybe a little bit along the tops of her fingers here that are closest to our firelight. Then we're going to change the layer blending mode of our layer to soft light. And you can see that that makes it glow a little bit more. To make sure this glow only affects the brighter parts of her skin and not the shadows, we're going to use something called Blend If. Here's how we'll do it. So with our layer selected, we can open up the layer style panel uh, by going here to layer and then layer style and blending options. And it pulls up this layer style box. I'll just move it over here so we can see what it's doing. In here, you can see that we have our soft light blend mode selected and we currently have it set selected at 100 percent near the bottom of the dialog box you'll see two sliders one for this layer the current layer and one for the underlying layer since we want the orange glow to softly fade away from the darker shadow areas on her skin we'll look at the underlying layer slider See what happens to our color blend as we move the sliders left and right. There's one that controls the darks and one that controls the lights. To make this look smooth and natural, hold down the Alt on a PC or the Option key on a Mac and click and drag the little black triangle to split it in half. This feathers the fade so that the glow blends gently instead of creating a hard edge. And you can see the difference there. Play around with the slider options until the glow looks like it's naturally wrapping around the highlights of her skin and the violin instrument, just like real firelight would do. When you're happy with how it blends, hit OK. We can then go to the opacity of this layer and just turn it down a little bit so it's not as strong by pulling this slider here. It should be a very subtle effect, something like that. And there you can see with our glow added, without it, and then with it. Next, we'll add some smoke to our image. Let's add our overlay the same as we did before by going to File, Place Embedded, and then navigate to where you store your smoke overlays. In our collection from the Imaginator Studio, we have magical blue smoke overlays. So let's have a look at those. And I think this first one here will be perfect for our image. So we'll highlight that one and select Place to bring it into Photoshop as our smart object. Let's turn that to screen blending mode to make the black background disappear. And we'll adjust our size and place it over here in this area uh, where our violin bow is. Again, you can toggle the size, you can change and warp it however you like. Let's just pull some of it along here and make it a little thinner. I think something like that. I'm going to hit enter and see how that looks. Now you can see in this frame, I don't know how well that shows up for you, but the side of our, in this instance, the overlay goes off of the image. So we want to add a little layer mask to Control. We want to add a layer mask to control where our overlay will show or be hidden. 
In order to do that, you can hit this little icon at the bottom, which adds a layer mask. And when using your layer mask, you just want to remember that white reveals and black conceals. So we'll choose black with our soft brush, and we're just going to paint to hide some of that smoke where we don't want it to appear. I don't think we need it way down here. And we'll take away some of the smoke here in our flame area as well. That looks pretty good like that. Now, I don't like how bright the blue is in our smoke overlay. I want it to look more like traditional gray smoke. So I'm going to go to the adjustments panel. I'm going to use a hue and saturation adjustment on this. And in order to make our changes only apply to the smoke itself, I want to just hover over this line between our two layers, between the hue and saturation and the blue smoke and click Alt. Hold down the Alt and click. And you can see you get that little down pointing arrow. Just going to click that and you can see that it indicates here now our changes that we make to our hue and saturation will only affect the layer that is immediate below it, which is our blue smoke. We're just going to grab the saturation slider from our hue and saturation and pull that down to remove most of the blue coloring in our smoke. Then we're going to go back to our blue smoke layer and I want to just reduce our opacity to give it a more subtle effect. Something around there, that's about 30%, and that looks great. Next, let's add some drama by adding some sparks. We're going to go to File, Place Embedded, and navigate to where we can find some spark overlays. In this case, we're going to go to some collections from myself, Alana Lee, and in the Atmosphere Overlay Collection, we'll look at the different options here. And if you look at option number 15, this is some fire sparks. So we're going to select that one and place it into our image. We'll make them a little bit smaller and select Screen Blending Mode to make the background disappear. And I think these need to be even smaller. We're going to put those sort of just sparking up from the end of our bow. Just like that. Click Enter to lock that in place. And we'll just reduce the opacity ever so slightly. If you wanted to remove some of those sparks, again, you can add your layer mask. And with our black brush selected, just tap where you want to remove certain sparks. And it's kind of like a big eraser. And you can just erase them here and there, just to your liking. Now, I think one final effect I would like to add is to just add a smoky haze over the entire image. For that, we are going to navigate to the bonus collection, um, which was originally sold through the Portrait Master store, and it was the Creative Essentials Overlay Collection. Opening that up, we can see all of the different overlays in this collection. We are looking for one that is a very smoky, fog-like effect. And I like this one, to use this one sort of as an overall frame. We're going to place that so it covers our entire image. And let's change it to screen blending mode. And of course, that's way too strong. So we're going to pull the opacity of that layer down maybe down to about 
and I want to add a layer mask on that, and I don't really want any of it covering our focal point over our subject. So I'll use a big soft brush and just brush that off some of our areas around our subject to kind of create, it's almost like a vignette, creating a vignette with smoke. And it's nice and subtle, but here you go, uh, there is it without, and there is our image with the smoky layer. And that's it. I'm just going to add all of the layers that we collected into a single group. And so I can show you what it looked like before we added our creative overlays and our final image. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and feel inspired to experiment with overlays in your own editing. Be sure to check out the other resources available on the Imaginator Studio website. It's packed with unique effects, digital backgrounds, and business tools and templates for photographers and digital artists.